one of the hardest questions is, is, uh, is why is there suffering in the world? Do you have a good answer? Well, I have, I have some answers, um, but you're right that it is one of the toughest questions. The problem of pain or the problem of suffering um, or the problem of uh, theodicy, as, as theologians call it, is, is, is probably one of the toughest. I think it's important to um, say that there are certain types of answers to this question, but there are aspects of this question to which there is no intellectual answer that is going to satisfy. Um, and and the, the fact of the matter is, you know, when I'm speaking to an audience, uh, let's say um, at, a, at, a, at some kind of lecture, I can be sure that there are, pe there are people in that audience who are either personally suffering, they've got illness, they've got pains, they're, maybe they're facing death, or someone in their family is in similar sorts of situations. So suffering is a reality, and, the, and, and there is nothing that I can say that is going to solve their feeling of agony and angst and and uh, maybe despair um, in those types of situations. There is really only one thing that I think humans can do for one another in those kinds of situations, and that is simply to be there, to be there alongside your friend or your or your colleague or 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 whoever you know, family member or whoever it might be. Um, and that's the only really sense in which we can give comfort. If we try to give intellectual solutions to these problems, we're going to be like, like the comforters that were in the book of Job in the, in the Bible, um, who, who brought no comfort to Job himself um, with their intellectual answers. But if they had been there, and some of them were there, they sat alongside, um, that is some level of comfort. Um, and, and after all, that's the meaning of the word compassion. It means to suffer alongside of somebody. And I would say, first off, you know, what does a Christian say about suffering? The, the first thing a Christian should say is compassion is all that really counts. And what's more, we say that God has acted in compassion towards us. That is to say, he has suffered with us in the person of Jesus Christ. And when we see the passion of Jesus, we recognize that God takes suffering deadly seriously, has taken it so seriously that he's been willing to come and be a part of his creation in the person of, of Jesus Christ and suffer death, the most horrible death on the cross, um, and for our benefit. So that's one side of of suffering. But the question, you know, the philosophical question remains, you know, surely if God is good, you know, and God is omnipotent, um, benevolent, um, you know, why doesn't he uh, take away all the suffering? Why doesn't he cause miracles to occur that will take away all this suffering? Um, I think there are some good answers to that question um, in, the, in the following sense, that um, you know, we live in a world where the consistency of the world is an absolutely crucial part of it. You know, the fact that our world behaves reproducibly in the main is absolutely essential for the integrity of our lives. Without it, we wouldn't exist, okay? And so there is a sense in which the integrity of creation um, calls for there being consistent behavior, which you know these days we think of as being the laws of nature. Okay, right. um, and so the consistent behavior of nature is very, very important. And it's what enables us to be what we are. Um, and if you're calling upon God in 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 your critique of why isn't this benevolent Creator, you know, fixing things? Um, one answer is he's fix things in a certain sense um, to have an integrity in them, um, and that integrity is the best thing. It's the way we have our existence. It's the way we live and move and have our being. And you know, if you want something different, you've got to show that there is a way in which you could invent a world that is better.
that it has the integrity that we need to exist, okay, and 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 to be able to think and 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 love and and be, um, but but you are going to do it better, you know. And the atheists think that maybe they have got a better idea, but if they thought about it a bit more carefully, they'd realize no one has put forward a better idea, okay. So, so the so another way to to say that. Uh, I mean, is that suffering is an integral part of this, of um, of a, of a consistent existence? So, I so, think so, that. sort of uh, in, the, in the philosophical, in a philosophical sense, uh, the full richness and the beauty of our experience would not be as beautiful, would not be as rich, uh, if there was no suffering in the world. Is that is that possible? <clears throat> Well, I think you said two different things that aren't exactly, at least that aren't exactly yeah. the same. One is that suffering is an integral part of, of uh, our experience. You know, that might be considered a challenge to certain types of Christian theology or, or even uh, Jewish theology. In other words, um, Christians talk about the fall and talk about uh, Adam and Eve in the garden and and have the, have a vision of there being some kind of perception from or, or, or perfection from which we have fallen and i think there is a perfection from which we've fallen but i don't think that perfection is some kind of physical perfection in other words i don't subscribe personally to the view that some some christians do that there was some state um prior to the fall in which no, death did not occur I don't think that that's consistent with science as we know it, and I and I think that um, death, for example, has been part of the biological world and the and the universe as a whole um, from from billions of years ago. So, so just to be clear about that, um, you know, I, I on the other hand, I do th so. If that's the case, then certainly in that sense, at the very least. Um, suffering, or at least death, okay, is part of the biological existence, and that probably seems so completely obvious to somebody who you know is au fait with science, whether they you know whether they're a scientist or not. Well, so and I apologize if I'm interrupting, but it's the obvious reality of of uh, our life today. But there's a lot of people. I, I think it's currently in vogue. I've, I've talked to quite a few folks who kind of see as the goal of many of our pursuits as to in, in extend life indefinitely. A sort of, uh, you know, a dream for many people is to live forever. Uh, but in the in the in the technological world, in the engineering world, in the scientific world, I mean, that's that's the big dream. To me, it feels like that's not a dream. It's I certainly would like to live forever. Uh, like that, that's the initial feeling, the instinctual feeling, because, you know, life is so amazing. But then if you actually kind of like you've presented it, if you actually uh, live that kind of life, you would realize that that's actually a step uh, backwards. That's a step down from the experience of this life. It, in my sense, that death is an essential part of life, uh, about uh, essential part of this experience, death of all things. So the, the, thing, the, the fact that things end, somehow, and the scarcity of things, somehow create the beauty of this experience that we have. Yeah, transhumanism doesn't look very attractive to me either, but it also doesn't look very feasible. Um, <laughs> but yeah. that's a whole big topic that I'm not an, exactly an expert, <laughs> but I'll say, but I, but you know, I've a, I'm of a certain age where my mortality is more pressing or more yes. obvious to me than it once was. Okay, um, and um, and I don't dread that. I don't see that as, in a certain sense, even the enemy. Okay, you're not afraid of death. Well, I'm afraid of lots of things in a in a in a conceptual way, but it doesn't keep me awake at night. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm, I think, like most people, I'm more afraid of pain than I am of death. So I, I don't want to put myself forward as some kind of hero that doesn't <laughs> worry about these things. That's not true. But I, I do think, and, and maybe this is part of my Christian outlook, um, that there is life beyond the grave. Um, 
But I don't think that, that, that it's life in this universe or in this, um, certainly not in this body and maybe not in a certain sense in this mind. I mean, you know, Christian, Christian belief in the afterlife is, is that we'll, we will be resurrected. We will be, in a certain sense, be with God. I don't know what that means and I don't think anybody else really quite knows what that means. But there are lots of ways that over history, people, artists and, 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 and writers and so forth have pictured it. Um, and these are all perhaps some of them helpful ways of thinking about it.